So here at Gulf Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected.
Hey, what's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back, so come out and see them. Thanks, guys.
Hey, what's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back, so come out and see them. Thanks, guys. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything that to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking and uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast. Good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to the Mississippi Coast Coliseum, the Wolves' Den, as your Mississippi Sea Wolves will be taking on once again tonight the Columbus River Dragons and the Federal Prospects. Hockey League here on the Mississippi Sea Wolves Broadcasting Network. This is the final game in this three game stretch between the Sea Wolves and the River Dragons. This is their 11th meeting this year, and the Sea Wolves remain winless after falling last night to Columbus 3 to 1. The Sea Wolves are giving up around six goals per game in this series with the River Dragons, while the Sea Wolves have only averaged three in all of the nine contest or the 10 contest leading up to this point in the year and coming into tonight the river dragons are sitting atop the continental division with the top points in the league and your sea wolves are sitting in the number four spot still 
as they're trying to keep the distance there between them and the number five. In tonight's contest, as I said a moment ago, is the final game in this series. And the conference leading Columbus with the Seawolves are not done on this homestand. Tomorrow night, come celebrate St. Patrick's Day with the Seawolves when the Seawolves take on the Zydeco in a conference matchup and help Mississippi score another win with a little puck of the Irish as your Mississippi Seawolves will be wearing special green sweaters and celebrating St. Patrick's Day here. So wear your green tomorrow night as the puck is going to drop at 7.05 and we're looking for a great crowd here in the Wolves' Den. And once again tonight, I am Harold Rose sitting in for Javik Blake here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. And as I said last night, the Seawolves fell to Columbus 3-1 to one here in the Mississippi Gulf Coast Coliseum. You know, the highlights of the inning for your Seawolves back in the net for Mississippi was Blake Warwick. He had 35 saves on the evening, only allowed two goals. That, one, that third point for Columbus was an empty netter there at the end of the contest with under two minutes on the clock. You know, just looking back at the game, you know, the offense, they worked hard and tried to move the puck up the boards, and they had set lots of good passes into the slot, but a lot of times they just couldn't finish as the, as the Columbus defenders are quick on their skates, and they intercepted a lot of the passes and obstructed and got in the way of the Seawolves from getting into that slot. You know, one of the things that Seawolves had difficulty overcoming last night is the speed of the Columbus defenders. They were interrupting the offense all night, and it never seemed like the offense could really get going. And the, the forwards had a, trouble, had a lot of trouble finding open ice. And once again, you know, the, the big issue also in the goal was Lavalier for the, for the Columbus River Dragons played a superb game in the net and gave up that one goal to, on the one-timer there. He had 24 saves, and, and the Seawolves were, were not able to capitalize in the third period when they really seemed like they, get, they got things going because the Seawolves seemed like they were, saw some success when they were physical, and that slowed down the speed of Columbus a bit. Well, hopefully the Seawolves will come out, and Coach Skinner's got them fired up that they'll go. Now, also, remember, remember sometimes you're going to see, you know, the, def the defenders are able to skate free. And let's take this opportunity to hear once again from some of our partners here on the Seawolves Broadcasting Network. Hey, Seawolves fans, it's Blake Wyrick, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Starr with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone and uh, just letting you guys know we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors get 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six-month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimum purchase, and you're good to go.
back here in the press box in the Wolves' Den as we're looking at time on the clock, just over eight minutes before puck drops here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. And let's, I'll come back to you in just a moment as we get ready for the starting lineups. Hey Seawolves fans, it's Blake Weirich, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone and uh, just letting you guys know we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors, you get 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diaverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimum purchase, and you're good to go. All right, fans, we're getting close to puck drop. We're probably about five or so minutes from the introduction of your starters and going back to last night's game. 
There, the Seawolves had 23 total shots on goal. Yeah, um, on besides the one that that found its way home from Wall, you know the Justins, Barr and Portillo both had four shots. Stoya, Bond, and Lissio had three. And I'm looking forward to tonight's contest, as I'm sure they're going to be more aggressive. And that seems to be the game plan this evening as the officials here are getting there behind the inflatable as we're going to get some Biloxi Bronx cheers probably when they skate across the ice. But we are probably three minutes now from the starting game introductions. And we want to thank you for joining us here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network because the Seawolves are entering a critical part of the season trying to get over this hump here with Columbus in the house and look forward to seeing you guys as we're getting close to the starting lineups as I see the Seawolves lining up in the tunnel. The auction is uh, literally just the process of charging the mitochondria and the cells in it, right? It's a lot deeper than it seems, bro. I want you to really try to focus here on letting go of your thoughts, right? Thinking's not really helping us right now. Think about to start here, the practice is really just letting go of thinking and just taking charge of really feeling, just feeling what's going on and almost taking your judgment about what you feel out of the, out of the picture. You're just a state of witness, right? Family on three, one, two, three, family! Fans are getting the starting the lineup here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum on the Mississippi Seals Broadcasting Network of the visiting Columbus River Dragons. As we're just a few moments away from the starters of your Mississippi Seawolves. And by the looks of things, it looks like we're going to have the opportunity to get started on time here this evening. Thank you. 
Fans, as are coming up for the ceremonial pup drop, we're looking forward to a good contest this evening. That score last night, remember, was three to one. I believe your Sea Wolves are going to make a much better show in this evening. They look like they had a lot more energy in their warm-ups tonight than they did last night, and I think they're they are raring to go. The officials are meeting at center ice. We're just a few seconds here from the faceoff. We'd like to thank you once again for joining us here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network this evening. And also, we want, we want to see you here in the bleachers tomorrow night on Friday night as we celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Here with your Mississippi Wolves, Sea Wolves taking on the Zydeco. Looks like Barr's heading in to take the face off. Zneskov is heading over to the bench. There's going to be a switch out there. Reporting on to the ice is Lissio. So we're ready to go. And it's a good sign here. Seawolves fans winning that first face-off. One of the things last night, the Columbus seemed to win most of the face-offs. And it seemed to put the Seawolves in a hole. Oh, no. Lissio intercepted the puck while the goalie was out of the crease. But now Columbus is on the attack. And a shot there from Shinkerick. Now this is where it's going to be key for the Seawolves controlling this puck. Now Russell takes it's on the boards and it is going to sneak through the neutral zone as the Seawolves dump it off for a line change. 
Chasing the puck down is Nielsen. Makes that. Makes that pass. And there's our first Omnitech icing call this evening. This base off is going to be on the stick side of Wyrick. Like I said a few minutes ago, it's going to be key and important for the Seawolves to win a lot more of these face offs this evening to try to take some of the puck time away from Columbus. Looks like the official is headed over to the Seawolves bench here while we got a little bit of delay in action. As we have the clock right now on your broadcast on YouTube. Looks like it's going to take three or four of them to sort this out. Only one of the linesmen still sitting in the face-off circle. They're having a discussion. Time for me to get the old binoculars out to see what's going on here. Looks like one of your Seawolves is headed to the bench or headed to the penalty box. Trying to get a peek in to see who it is. It looks like it is because that, that's all. Looking for the signal from the official about how he ended up in there. I have to wait until it possibly shows up here on the scoreboard in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. All right. Wong is now in the circle for the faceoff. And right there from the corner of the house is a shot on goal for Doe. And now the Seawolves are undermanned as we have a Gulf Coast Firestone power play here for the Columbus River Dragons. So a minute and a half left as Columbus comes on the attack. Dumped in by McDonald. Pushing up right there is Lind on the boards. Cross the ice to Storjahan. Dumps it behind him to Petrotonio. And the shot is wide of the net. The offense still set up for the River Dragons. Interfering, interfering on the passer. Well done by the defense getting in the passing lane. As you see what was going to try here to clear the zone. Petronio tries to get it right there near the crease, but it's going to be covered up by Wyrick. So far here in these first two minutes, it looks like it may be a better night for Wyrick because it's last night it seemed like he was under attack most of the evening. Both teams are going to go here on a line change with about 17.50 left in this first period. Hell on him for your Seawolves. Oh, John, the Seawolves are trying to get the power play kill. Here all year, the Seawolves are 77% on that power play kill. They're over halfway into it and see if they can clear the puck out of the zone. There they sit back now into the neutral zone. Now Helen chasing the puck down. Seawolves trying to get back on defense. They're able to get back as, as Columbus loses the advantage now near the blue line. Looking for a pass and the wrister from high at the top of the house and he's able to keep it in the zone. Under five seconds left on the Gulf Coast Firestone power play and that's another power play kill for your Mississippi Seawolves. 
Why Lyric is able to cover that one up. Both teams are going to go here for a line change. Just over three minutes into the first period of play. Bill Wong in, into the circle. And once again, the pass is intercepted by the River Dragons. Seawolves trying to set up the offense into the neutral zone. Off the boards. Nelson back there getting in the action. And the Seawolves are able to keep it on in their offensive zone. Battling here at the boards. Trying to get it out for a good pass. But it's going to squeak into the neutral zone. Bond with the puck. Trying to get the offense set up. Under 16 minutes left to go in this first period. Score is still 0-0 zero zero here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum on Mississippi Seals Broadcasting Network. Allen on the boards here on the near side. Tracking it down is Lynn. Puck squeaks its way back into the neutral zone. Portello fighting at the fighting on the boards. Lissio also there. Seawolves dump the puck down. And in the goal this evening is a different goalie for Columbus. It's Taylor Joseph in the crease. Oh, a missed opportunity there as the pass slipped by. Lissio. Now trying to control the puck, and Columbus is going to put it into the Seawolf zone. Up against the boards. Stoya over there to help. Back to the middle, one-on-one, -on -one, and he's able to reach around, and the score is going to be by Underwood for the Columbus River Dragons here at the 1454 mark on the scoreboard here in the Coliseum. Underwood was able to find some open ice on the back side of the defense, get into a one-on-one -on -one situation, and he's going to be able to put one on the, in the back of the net right there in the two hole. Now here at the faceoff bar, and Columbus is able to control the puck. Connects off, pushes it back into the offensive zone. And that puck goes down the ice. And it looks like it's going to be another Omnitech icing here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Five minutes gone. And the Seawolves are trailing by one as, as they head to the bench for our first media timeout here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back, back in the game, back in motion, back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back. Back here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum at the first media timeout. The Columbus River Dragons put one in the back of the net. Mississippi Seawolves yet to score. And what we talked about in the pregame show, the Seawolves look like they're coming out here being a little bit more physical. But here in the first five minutes, it looks like up here in the press box that Columbus has been able to control the puck. 
Trying to see if we can finally get a good shot on goal. Seawolves trying to get this puck here on this faceoff. That faceoff is going to be to Joseph's right. That was Barr in there. They win the puck. And the wrister from Russell. Is it going to be able to find its way home? Columbus gets another shot near. Right there on the ball. On the ball is Hunter. They switch sides, and Anderson is going to be able to keep it in the zone. And the shot is right there, covered up or hit, touched by Wyrick. And we have our first flying biscuit of the evening. Both teams with the wholesale line change. Seawolves looking to get this puck out of their defensive zone, trying to get something going on the offense. Columbus is able to control the puck out of the faceoff. Not able to get the pass home. Asselin finding on the boards. Now into the neutral zone, into the bond. With the wrister over the top of the net. And on that whistle. Like right, we're gonna have our first penalty against the against the Columbus River Dragons this evening. Going into the box is Shunkaruk. As we're gonna have a Gulf Coast power play here at the 1337 mark in the first period. In last night's ball game or excuse me, at last night's contest, there was only one power play the entire evening and we already had our second here with less than 10 minutes gone in the first period. Let's see if the Seawolves can take advantage here on the Gulf Coast Firestone power play. Columbus is able to clear the puck out of the zone. Wyrick puts it in Bond's hand, on Bond's stick. Oh, with the pass back, they're not able to complete that attack. As the Seawolves are now trying to get organized again in their zone. And here they come. Stoic pushes it to Bond. Bond gets around the defender. Caught up against the boards. Kuznetsov in, there, in the scrum. Now back here at the blue line. It's Barr. Stoya can put the puck at the top of the zone. Barr keeps it in. Under a minute left to go in this power play. And Bong tries to poke it in from the back side behind Joseph. Not able to get there. And Columbus clears the puck. 40 seconds left to go in the Gulf Coast Firestone power play. And here come the Seawolves into the zone. Barr leaves the puck behind him. Stoya mixing it up in the house. Stoya at the top of the zone. The goalie comes off the ice. They put the extra man here with 11 seconds left. Now Warwick is back in the net. Coach Skinner is being absolutely aggressive, and that's what we wanted to see. Tonight.
Now on this power play, the Seawolves have a great opportunity with the two-man advantage with another River Dragon in the penalty box. Only four seconds left on the original power play. The shot is blocked, and now the River Dragons are back in action. 91's out of the box. Now there's a minute and a half left on the second Gulf Coast Firestone power play. Because Ed Solve puts it across the ice, now up against the near side board. See who comes out with the puck. And not able to control it on the board there. It looks like Columbus is going to be able to clear the zone here with a minute 10 left on the power play. As Columbus is shorthanded, they're now going to settle back towards the neutral zone into their defensive area with a quick little change. Dumping on to the far side of the rink. Here near the high slot. Oh. Joseph with the look like the stick save. Stoya now sends it back across the neutral zone. And again, it's out of the neutral zone as the Sea Wolves get on side. And now chance one-on-one. Put punched out of control by Aslan. He's able to get stymie the offensive attack. And now here come your Seawolves. In front of the net by himself. Score! Five to ten minutes in the first period. That goal right there will be the 14th goal of the year for Jackson Bond as the Seawolves are able to even it up here at the 10 minute mark. 10 minutes and one second on the board here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. As the Seawolves even it up. Toya and Wong on the assists on that goal. And that's going to help improve that power play goal percentage by your Seawolves coming into the night. They were 23%, but this gives us the opportunity to take a break here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network to hear from some of our partners So here at Gulf Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. Welcome back to the Mississippi Coast Coliseum and the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. We have a great match on our hands as the score is even one to one. Seawolves even it up at the 10 minute mark. As we're headed to the puck drop. All right, the officials are ready to go. And it looks like our clock is going to be synced up. And they're happy with the activity at the edge of the circle. Official there to have a little bit of a talk. It looks like it looks like it's Helen. 
Seawolves are able to take control of the puck. Is that solve on the near side boards? Helen tied up at the blue line, but he's able to dump it in. Bar chasing it down, but it's going to be an Omnitech icing call. 9.35. Looks like here a little bit of extracurriculars as the Seawolves are headed to the bench. The officials over there trying to sort it out. I know a lot of Seawolves fans here in the stands tonight are happy to see this aggression. It looks like Aslan's a little fired up, having to be escorted over to the bench by the official. Trying to keep him away as he's headed to the penalty box. Almost some more extracurriculars there at the at center ice. Looks like we're going to have us a good one here this evening, and that's what the Seawolves need to do. Last night they needed this aggression, and we're going to see what Coach Skinner can get out of them. See, Wolves are able to get the, get the line change done. So they're trying to sort things out. And it does not appear to look like Aslan's headed to the penalty box. The Seawolves are still at full strength. Their effort at the officials attempt to get control of this contest. And now they're going to come back together to talk about it again. Now it looks like we're ready to go as the officials are skating across the ice. Here we are for getting ready for the puck drop with the score tied one to one as you miss the Wolves host the Columbus River Dragons. That was not able to clear the zone, but now the Sea Wolves are able to get it into the neutral zone. Helen following the puck. Here on the boards, squeaking across all the way to the far side of the ice, passes it back. Now the defense is able to set up. Here come the Seawolves into the neutral zone. Lambert tosses the biscuit into the zone. Columbus now controlling the puck. Center ice across the blue line as they're going to get a line change done. But all by still trying to wrap around the goal. This get up against the boards. Anderson right there fighting for the puck. Back to the near side board. Anderson dumps it towards the slot. And stays in the zone. And a wrister coming from the top of the house. And it is going to be stopped by Weirich. It's breaking the action. Gives your Seawolves the opportunity for their line change. This faceoff is going to come to the right side of Weirich. Wrapping around the net. Lynn with the puck. Pushes it into the neutral zone. Joseph is going to take the puck. And we end up with 
some wood on the ice. If Joseph lost his stick, there's some twigs sitting around out there. Under eight minutes left to go in this first period. Score even one to one as your Seawolves host the Columbus River Dragons. A lot of long break in action tonight as trying to get things forward, get things going. Ref gets the puck from Warwick. They head it down for the faceoff. As the Seawolves are going to be in their offensive zone. And they're trying to put something together here. Long. And for the faceoff. Penalty is on the River Dragons and that gives us another Gulf Coast Firestone power play. Seawolves getting organized. Coming into the neutral zone. Dump the pass off. Looks like Barr. I'm sorry, that's Aslan. One around the far side. And the puck is going to be dropped at Portillo's feet. Behind. The, trying to find Stoyak in some open area. Passes it back. Trying to find it across the middle, but that pass is intercepted by Columbus. And they dump it into the zone. We're now under seven minutes to go in the first period. One all even up here at the Mississippi Gulf Coast Coliseum on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. Oh, Buck Wong had the opportunity there. Now they're not able to control the puck. And, of course, Columbus is down the ice quickly. Now alone here on the near side is Anderson. That goes all the way back into the Seawolf zone. Columbus has been done a good job of killing this power play. Not getting much action as Nielsen has it one more time with only 13 seconds left. Nielsen by himself. Now they belong to the puck. And now one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Swan. But Wyrick is there, and the shot is off the post. Anderson sends it in, but the power play is over. Seawolves are not able to capitalize on that power play. Lambert here on the near side, and the puck finds its way. Now back into the offensive zone. Chasing it down as Bond pressed up against the boards. Trying to find some help here on the near side. Not able to get it as Columbus gets it out of the zone. Matanak sends it out to Bard. Now Lissio at center ice. On the far side, gets it off the board. Hits it off to Bond. Columbus is able to make the defensive play again. Stoya dumps it into the end zone. Scrumming. Wong here at the board. Stoya looking, at, looking to get in. Trying to find the main open. Sends it around the boards. Lissio there. He's pressed up against the far side boards. Poking around. Trying to get something out of this pile. It's tied up in the zone, and now Columbus is on the attack, and it looks like they're going to slow it down a little bit. Dump it into their zone. And a 427 on the clock here in the Coliseum. It brings us to our next break in the action here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network.
back here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Just under five minutes left to go in the first period. The Mississippi Seawolves put one in the back of the net. The Columbus River Dragons also have one themselves. I know I am absolutely happy seeing the aggressiveness coming from the Seawolves. The officials have had to been over to talk with the Seawolves and the bench a few times. Looks like Skinner has his young man fired up for this contest. As we come back from the media timeout, four minutes left to go. See if we can get a late flurry of activity here. Bars headed to the to center ice to take take this face off. Is that Saul fighting? Oh, tree can't get it from under the referee's feet. Now the Columbus is on the attack. They're not able to get a shot off when they have it in the zone. Aslan spilled from behind. No signal for anything from the official. Kuznetsov had the puck, but now, and the Columbus is not able to tag out. So we're going to stop the clock here. Call a sim. Four minutes left in the first period. All uh, right, now Mississippi going to try to set up their offense. Try to get something going. Intercepted the pass. That was Lissio, but now Columbus is not able to control the puck. He's going to dump it back into the zone, but there everybody has to get back. And now your Seawolves trying to get the offense ready to go. Under three and a half minutes left to go in this first period. Portillo across the ice. Sends it around the boards. All tied up, but Columbus is able to take control of the puck. They're on the attack and a flying biscuit. Here is three minutes left to go in the first period. Seawolves are doing a good job hustling back, getting on defense, and interfering and getting in the passing lanes of Columbus. This first period of play is a very drastic difference from last night. And the play is getting the crowd amped up as we're here on the faceoff. And Seawolves are able to control the puck. Mark Matanok with it. Now into the zone. Wong chasing it down. Passes it back across the slot. Nobody there to put any action on it. And now we have we have Columbus. The attack is slowed down by the defense. Columbus still controls the puck. Now here you the Seawolves. Oh, not able to flip it out of the from behind the crease. Now a lot of action here in front of in, the Seawolves are able to get it out of the zone. Wyrick was able to keep the ball, or keep the puck out of the net. Wong flips it back on the boards. Matanok sends it out of the zone. Signal is up from the linesman, and the puck is dumped. Trying to wrap around the net, waiting on some help. But the pass is going to be intercepted by Columbus. And now the River Dragons pressing here with under two minutes left to go in the first period. That puck found its way into crease and covered up by Wyrick. A minute 40 left to go in this first period. A lot of energy from the Seawolves here this evening. 
And I know the Seawolves are going to be able to bring this energy tomorrow night. Looking for a lot of fans in the bleachers and in the stands for our St. Patrick's game. They'll be wearing special green sweaters as they host the Zydeco. Now the action back started here on the ice. Seawolves going to try to set something up. Lynn weaves and dinks his way through the defenders. Puck is behind the goal line. Not able to make its way all the way around. Hello, and in front of the net, able to put it in the two hole. Score! Seawolves! Good hustle from Helen as he was where he needed to be. And on the faceoff, the River Dragons are able to control, control the puck. And Helen's goal, that's his only his fourth goal of the year. Now under a minute left to go in the first period. Columbus River Dragons one and your Mississippi Seawolves two. Based off is gonna be over here to Warwick's right on a stick side. Trying to spy who is in there for the face off for your Seawolves. And the puck squirts to the near side board. Not a clear chance there as the Seawolves are able to clear the zone. 40 seconds on the clock here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Columbus trying to organize here for probably one last attempt here at the end of the first period. And here comes Columbus and they're able to Seawolves are able to poke this puck out of the control. Columbus is going to sit back. Under 15 seconds left here on the clock in the Coliseum. Bond with the puck in front of the net. Oh, not able to poke it in there. Back in from Long there. Now he's up again. Going to be tied up against the board. But as the first period comes to a close, the Columbus River Dragons won. Your Mississippi Seawolves two. Here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we want to just keep you connected. Hey, what's going on Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back. So come out and see them. Thanks, guys.
Back here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum on the Mississippi Broad Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network, your Mississippi Seawolves two, Columbus River Dragons one. Very exciting first period of play here on the ice. The Seawolves came out and did what they needed to do. What I believe they needed to do is play more aggressive. There's been a lot of action on the boards, a lot of extracurriculars going on near the benches. And it looks like things have fired up. But starting off in this first period of play, scoring was opened up by the River Dragons. Moore scored a goal at five at the 507 mark, assisted on that by McDonald. Another point for McDonald. And also assist on Hunter. McDonald is the points leader here. And it's another. Streak for him as he had, makes it to 31 games with a point. For 31 games with a point. And then later in the period at the 9.59 mark, your Mississippi Seawolves were able to even it up. When Jackson Bond was able to put it in the net with the assist there from Philip Wong. Also Matt Stoya. And they battled back and forth for the next 10 minutes. And that first goal there was a power play as it was a Gulf Coast Firestone power play. And the second goal is added with under two minutes left to go in the period. Lucas Helen got his fourth goal of the season as he was able to find some space right there slashing through the slot and put it up in the three hole. And that, that's how we got to the score here with the league leading Columbus River Dragons 1 and your Mississippi Seawolves 2. As the fans here are doing the chicken dance song, let's take a break once again to hear from some of our partners here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting we Network. Built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking. And uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast. Hey Seawolves fans, it's Blake Wyrick, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone and uh, just letting you guys know we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, 
All season ticket holders and sponsors get 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diaverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six-month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimal purchase, and you're good to go. Here as the Zamboni is making its way around the ice. We're not having the delays we had last night here as the, as the pipe wouldn't come out of the ice, but we're ready to go. And the Twisted T Zamboni is making his way, doing his rounds here with about 10 minutes left here in the intermission on the clock here at the Mississippi Gulf Coast Coliseum. Well, it hasn't been pretty. With the scores, you have Mississippi Seawolves 2, Columbus River Dragons 1. The Seawolves have come out tonight, and they have been absolutely scrappy. They have been pushing people around, getting away sometimes a little bit, a few extracurricular activities, as the officials have had a hard time, it appears, getting things under control out there, as the Seawolves were able to get one power play goal, and the second is a full strength goal, but... They are being aggressive. They're taking the, the River Dragons out of their system, it appears. They have not gotten the breakaways that they had last night. And on the offensive side, the River Dragon defense is quick, but the Seawolves have been relentless or were relentless there in that first period. And they were able to get two good goals to have a lead here after one period of play. The crowd here is getting ready for the next period. I know the hope the Seawolves will bring this same energy as as they take on the Zydeco here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum tomorrow night. Puck drop will be 7:05 for our special St. Patrick's Day celebration. As the kids are up here in the dance contest, trying to give their best moves. A little bit of dab action from the young man in the Seawolves jersey. You know, these midweek games, it's kind of hard to get the crowd picked up. And we're thankful for the for the fans that have showed up this evening and all you fans out there supporting your Mississippi Seawolves by watching tonight on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. Oh, a little 80s breakdance action coming from the crowd. Going a little old school. And we're gonna, with only eight minutes left to go in this intermission, we're gonna take the opportunity again to hear for some of our partners here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network as your Mississippi Seawolves have a lead with two goals to the Columbus River Dragons one. Seawolves down here. Woo! Having a blast. This is so intense. So much fun. So I can't wait to get back out there. Let's go. This is just kill.
When injury knocks you out, Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back, back in the game, back in motion, back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienville Orthopedic Specialists, we will get you back. Six minutes left here in the intermission. After one period of play, Columbus River Dragons 1, your Mississippi Seawolves 2. As the excitement really ticks up here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum after the Kids Dance Contest. So here at Gold Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. And a little penalty update after this one period of play. Your Mississippi Seawolves only had one man sent to the box. That was Kuznetsov early in the ball game. Only, excuse, only early in the contest. One minute in, he had a two-minute penalty for delay a game. Now for the Columbus River Dragons. They have had three guys in the box. Sukaric was the first one to go in with a cross-checking penalty at 6.25 in the period. And then a high-sticking minor on Shehetka. And then the last time was... Ah, uh, here we go. Number 34, the River Dragons. And he ended up in the box four for interference. But the Seawolves were able to take advantage of the first power or the first power play as they were able to the second power play, I'm sorry, as they were able to put the puck in the back of the net for a power play goal to improve, improve that power play percentage here on the season. Now the clock's winding down. Four minutes left in the intermission. Getting close to your Seawolves returning to the ice. So let's send it back once again to hear from some more of our partners here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. Hey, what's going on Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. 
Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand. So you can bring your own if you need any anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast. That's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back. So come out and see them. Thanks, guys. The officials have retaken the ice as we're waiting to start up the second period of play. Your officials for tonight's contest, your referees are Dave Glassman and Chris Rowe, the linesman Gary Glassman and Jonathan DeSalle. They are calling a very different game than what they called last night. And one of the reasons is the Mississippi Seawolves, who are ready to come back out of the tunnel to warm up as they flip sides. They have done a great job of coming out and being aggressive and getting the Columbus River Dragons out of their offense. And it's been hard to put these together, and so far, Wyrick has done a wonderful job in the net. So far, Wyrick has had 10 saves on the evening. The defense has allowed 11 shots on goal. But here with one minute left to go in this break before the Seawolves come out here and warm up. Your Mississippi Seawolves have a first period lead over the Columbus River Dragons, two to one. And now Roderick is leading the way onto the ice. As the Seawolves Sea come out to get a little bit of time on the ice. It looks like Skinner had them all fired up in the locker room. And they are going to be ready to go here without much of a warm up. You know, I would say they're, they're making a statement here, and so far after one period, they have made a statement as they have a 2-1 lead over the league-leading Columbus River Dragons. Now the officials look like they're giving a good talking to the... to Lucas Helen. Now in the circle, as they're ready to go for the face-off. As we're ready to drop the puck to start the second period of play. Now it looks like the referee threatening Allen. Seawolves are able to control the puck on that faceoff. Lambert sends it across the ice. They dump it into the zone, played by Joseph on the crease. Sends it out to Wickline. Wickline sends it to the boards. Putting a body on them here. Seawolves are trying to clear it out. And, you know, the, as you're watching here, the Columbus is very aggressive. The Seawolves are trying to interfere here with the passing lanes. They were able to do it. Helen comes up away without a stick. Looks like Limpick holding his arm a little bit. And Columbus is able to find the back of the net right there. The score at the 1910 mark on the scoreboard here at the Coliseum. I was watching. Hell, I was watching Helen and it looked like he was dealing with an injury. Missed the action there on the puck. But with that shot, it's going the River Dragons are gonna even the score up. Two to two. 
And now the River Dragons are on the attack again. And Wyrick is able to put the glove on that biscuit. And it's going to be a face-off to his right side. It appears the Columbus River Dragons have come out with a fire in their belly, similar to what the Seawolves did. All right, McDonald on the attack there. Now we have a break in the action here. 1752. Ah, uh, the wrist shot blocked by Wyrick. As the Seawolves are regrouping. But the pass is going to be intercepted by the River Dragons. Able to keep it in the zone. Up against the boards. Finally to the far side of the ice. Also, I'm down the end. The puck is gliding on the boards as the Seawolves are able to clear it. All right, line change coming from both sides. 16.50 left. In the second period of play, score all evened up. Garrick tries to get it out of the zone. The Seawolves have to keep it in there. Now the Columbus moving the puck, trying to get on the attack. All right. Now here come your Mississippi Seawolves. And the pass goes off the skate of the defender. Now the shot. Saved by Joseph. Sixteen thirteen left to go in the second period. Now the River Dragons are able to take control of the puck. Back to back to the neutral zone. Now on the attack is Wickline. And the shot is covered up and blocked by Wyrick. I'm getting nothing. And we're going to have a, looks like a flying biscuit. As we're going to be coming close to, to our first media break here in the second period. Score is all even. This face off is going to be to Wyrick's right. Seawolves trying to get the attack organized here. Into the neutral zone. Pushed up against the board by Wickline. A bomb score! Wow, 
Long puts it in the back of the net for his 13th goal of the year. Mississippi Seawolves are able to take the lead back three to two at the 15 and a half minute mark here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. That was Philip Wong, had a goal last night. That's a second one tonight. Now Wong in front of the crease again, right there in the slot, not able to put it home. They send it around the board. Stoya keeps it in the zone, but the defender it's in the way of the pass on the bond. Bond dumps it in. Scrum for the puck. Two Seawolves there. Wiped away from the officials. And now here, come Colum here comes Columbus. Nilsson was on the assist. Seawolves defense falls back into their zone and the puck is dumped. McDonald wrapping around, slips on the ice. Seawolves have the puck. See if they can take advantage of this opportunity here. And they're not going to be able to do that. And this is going to bring us to our media timeout here as we hear from some of our partners here on the Seawolves Broadcasting Network. Seawolves fans, it's Blake Weirich, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone, and uh, just letting you guys know, we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors, you get 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diaverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimal purchase, and you're good to go. Here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum, your Mississippi Seawolves with the 3-2 lead. Seawolves trying to clear the zone. Wyrick is able to cover the puck, no? Looking for the signal from the referee. It is going to be another save by Wyrick. The next faceoff here is going to be to Wyrick's left. The River Dragons are coming out with some intensity. Let's see how the Seawolves respond. Bar in for the faceoff. Oh, have the opportunity for the River Dragons once again. Wyrick there. Lind is able to fight. At the boards, Antonio trying to find some space, looking for somebody coming through the middle. Nobody there. Oh, 
almost stole the puck. Hella didn't see him behind him. Now Helen is moving forward. Dumps it into the zone. Defenders do a little quick line change. Now a full, full change. Oh. Stoya gets the puck, sends it around to the far side. Trying to get out of their zone. This now Wickline has the puck. Sends it out to the blue line. A wrist shot all the way from the back. Now here come your Sea Wolves. Antonio is able to intercept the pass. Now here comes Martinock. Trying to clear the puck. Far side. Across the middle. Off the skate. And control of the puck goes back to Columbus. Here comes Martinock. Dumps it into the zone. Around the corner of the boards. Now we got a chance, opportunity, shot from Bond. Not able to find its way home. And another save by Joseph there from the shot from the blue line. Plays the puck off the boards. Seawolves able to keep it in the zone. A little wrister from the bottom of the house. Able to get there on the defense. Well played by Russell. He's able to wrest the puck away from Columbus. Russell is still there. Columbus was unsuccessful centering the puck. Now they're able to back on the attack. Moore deep into the area. All right. Seawolves trying to get organized. Go on the attack. Cross the neutral zone. Controlled by Columbus. Now they have numbers and he lost the puck as he was headed into the slot. Not able to control it. As we head to the middle of the second period. Seawolves holding on to a 3-2 lead. Here come the Seawolves. Even numbers on the attack. Licio here on the near side. Barr sends it across the boards. Now here comes Columbus. Sends it across. Helen sends it back behind him. Not able to get the puck to Barr. Shakirik is not able to control the puck. And here come the Seawolves. Aslan sends it up the boards. Right out there to Doe. But the defense keeps Columbus out of the net and sends him out of the zone. Under nine and a half minutes left. And this brings us to our next opportunity to hear from some of our partners here on the Seawolves Broadcasting Network with 9.23 left to go in the second period. The Columbus River Dragons 2, your Mississippi Seawolves 3. Hey Seawolves fans, it's Blake Wyrick, Bill Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone. And uh, just letting you guys know, we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair. Uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey, Seals fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors, you get 15% off all services. Mm -hmm. 
Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six-month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimal purchase, and you're good to go. Back here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum, your Mississippi Sea Wolves three, the River Dragons two, with a great turn of events here. A lot more aggression coming out of your Sea Wolves as the crowd is fired up and ready to get back to action here. Now, the River Dragons have been a lot more active in the offensive zone. And the Seawolves defense has been able to slow them down a little bit. But the past few minutes, it has been a bit hectic. Helen on the far side. And the puck is out of the zone. Somebody's gloves are down on the ice. Able to get it. Seawolves trying to get, get the attack organized. Aslan sends it back. Coming across, it's like Kuznetsov. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was Lynn. She wrapped it around the net. Now Columbus on the attack. Swarmed by defenders. Not able to keep it in the zone. Defense sets up. Aslan controls the puck, and the pass is intercepted by McDonald. McDonald heads to the left side, sends it over the net. Bond was looking for the puck. And on that... Here we go, face off two to Warwick's left. Neutral zone, they were able to see what was dumping onto their offensive zone. Being aggressive here, but they're not able to keep it there. McDonald has a man in the slot. They're unable to make the connection on the pass. Coming are your Seawolves. Lissio on the near side. So two defenders there trying to keep control of the puck. But Columbus is able to get it out of the zone. Stoya. Right in here on the near side boards, the balls, or the puck is now on the far side. Get into the slot, turns around, stopped by Wyrick. His face off again is going to be on Wyrick's. Left side. What a session, Jay. Y'all killing it tonight. I mean, to the face off. Here in the second period, Columbus has been able to control a lot of the face offs. We're able to dodge one here, headed to the boards. Maybe you're going to try to wrap it around. But he's being harassed by the defense. But they're going to keep it in the zone. The goalie's coming out. They're going to try to get an extra man here. But Warwick with the stop. Seeing Joseph come out of the crease 
you can really tell that the River Dragons are trying to keep on the pressure. Here with the, the faceoff is going to be to Wyrick's right on his stick side. As the, as, and tonight, once again, we have our Mississippi Sea Wolves cheerleaders. They're over in the bleachers. Get down here as we're waiting the drop of the puck. 640 left to go in the second period. Sea Wolves trying to get it out of the zone. Now the River Dragons are on the power play. Russell is in the box as it's a Gulf Coast Firestone power play for the River Dragons. And the one-timer is stopped by Wyrick. Doe had the opportunity. Nobody in front of him. Wyrick is able to make the save. Now the face off again to Wyrick's left. Near side here to the press box. Long in there, fighting for the puck. It's Lind. So they send it back around the boards. Aslan trying to wrest control of the puck away from Columbus. Trying to get it out of the zone. And he's not able to find pay dirt. He was able to get open right there in the slot. Wyrick there with the stop. Under six minutes left to go in the second period. Minute 13 left on this power play. Seawolves really want to clear the puck out here. Relieve a little bit of pressure. And Columbus is able to keep it in the zone. Now the Seawolves finally clear it out into the neutral zone as Columbus gathers themselves, tries to set up the offense. And in the ice, and here comes Columbus. Looking for somebody to slosh through the middle. Nobody there. Now not able to find. Wyrick is able to stop it with his stick. Still in the zone. About 30 seconds left to go in this power play. Still in the zone. Puck on the far side of the ice. Trying to get him out of the crease. Now 12 seconds left here in the power play. And that shot is wide to the right. And the Seawolves clear the zone. And they're going to get the power play kill. Here with under five minutes. Left to go in the period. Here come the Seawolves. Wong not able to get deep into the zone. Here on the near side. Back against the boards. Trying to get some action. Stoya. Fighting for the puck. As the River Dragons clear it into the neutral zone. Stoya getting things organized. Heads to the far side. Here come, here come the River Dragons. But the pass is going to be stopped. A little push it here. Matanok with that aggression I mentioned earlier. Coming up on three and a half minutes on the clock here in the Coast Coliseum. Your Seawolves with the two to three lead. A lot of extracurriculars going on down here on the boards. The kids banging on the boards. And a quick shot is going to be stopped by Joseph at 322 on the clock here in the Mississippi Coast Superdome. And that's going to give us the final chance here in the second period to hear from our partners here on the Mississippi Sea Wolves Network. 
Hey Seawolves fans, it's Blake Wyrick, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone and uh, just letting you guys know we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors, you get 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diaboville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six-month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimum purchase, and you're good to go. on to a three to two lead. Oh. And apparently we're working on the audio issue here. I'd like to thank you guys for letting us know about it as we're here on the live stream. 320 left to go in the second period. Sea Wolves in Columbus's zone. Trying to get some action here. Keeping it in there. And Columbus now to center ice. Throws it deep off the glass. Oh, I thought it was going to be a flying biscuit in the bleachers there for a moment. Sea Wolves out to Helen. Pushes it back. Back deep behind the, behind the goalie. Columbus is able to keep it there, trying to get to the center, and the pass is deflected by the Seawolves, but right back to Columbus, and they're able to tag out. And Wyrick with the save, under three minutes left. The Seawolves trying to get that pressure off of Wyrick here. Columbus is keeping the pressure on, and now the Seawolves getting, get the puck at center ice. Near the center line, Columbus dumps it into the zone, fighting after that is Russell. Tracking the puck, puck down is Lissio. Lissio almost gets there, and the pass is going to be intercepted by Lynn. Tries to get a quick wrister off. Now here comes... Here comes Bretonia. Now behind Warwick. And right in front of the crease. Aslan pushes him out of the way. Far side of the ice. Push it out back towards the blue line. Dumped back in for Petronio. Petronio. Still not able to get it out of the zone. And finally, the Seawolves are able to clear it out of the zone. A little bit of change here. Coming up on under one minute to go in the second period. One minute, one minute remaining in the period. Furious last five minutes here coming from Columbus. And the Seawolves are able to get it out of the zone. Joseph comes up to try to pick up the pace of play. Columbus dumps it in. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see Wickline sitting there on the blue line. And now on the attack. Kuznetsov, oh, got the slap shot away, but he was not able to find pay dirt. Here again, Seawolves puts the pressure on. Right there in the high slot with Stoya. Now a two on one for Columbus, and he's wide of the net. 
15 seconds left, and here comes Columbus again. Centers the puck, and it's going to be cleared out by the Seawolves. As the clock is winding down, at the end of two, your Mississippi Seawolves three, the Columbus River Dragons two. As the Seawolves sitting on a one goal lead here on the number one team in the conference. Let's see if your Seawolves can give the River Dragons their fifth loss of the year. As we take this time to hear during this intermission from some of our partners here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. What's going on, Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back. So come out and see them. Thanks, guys. We have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything that to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking and uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast. Hey Seawolves fans, it's Blake Wyrick, Phil Wong, and Matt Stoya here at Gulf Coast Firestone. This is Matt Stoya with your Mississippi Seawolves at uh, Gulf Coast Firestone and uh, just letting you guys know we uh, service all types of oil changes, AC, Scheduled maintenance, uh, brakes, front end repair, uh, all types of tires for cars, trucks, ATVs, and trailer tires. 
Hey Seawolves fans, all season ticket holders and sponsors get 15% off all services. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, located at 4283 Pops Ferry Road in Diverville, Mississippi. And don't forget to ask about our six-month tire financing program. Only $149 down, minimum purchase, and you're good to go. Here we go. Pinball Republic Seawolves down here. Woo! Having a blast. This is so intense. So much fun. So I can't wait to get back out there. Let's go. This is just kill. Injury knocks you out. Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists will be there for you every step of the way. We are here to get you back. Back in the game. Back in motion. Back to your life. Our elite team of orthopedic specialists will work side by side with you, educating you about your treatment plan, utilizing advanced technology, and providing you with a successful path to recovery. Bienvo Orthopedic Specialists. We will get you back. So here at Gulf Coast Firestone, we specialize in your scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tire rotations. Um, we can special order any tire size you need, including we have some new trailer tires, ATV tires, and of course your regular car and truck tires. Um, we also specialize in AC work, brakes, just about anything you need for your automotive repair. Mississippi Coast Coliseum on the Seawolves Broadcasting Network. Your Mississippi Seawolves lead the Columbus River Dragons 3-2. We're here in the second intermission. We ended the first period with the score 2-1. to one. And as the second period opened, Columbus was able to jump right on it as Carter Shikarik had a goal with less than a minute in. He was assisted by Star Jahan. And for the next bit in the period, the River Dragons were furious on the Seawolves' side of the ice. But your Seawolves were able to answer at 427 in the period. You're going to see Philip Wong score a goal for the second straight night. He was assisted on that goal by Joaquin Nielsen. And Dmitry Matinok. The Columbus River Dragons were able to settle down some of the attack of your Seawolves as they, the Seawolves came out really raring to go first in the first period after the, after the intermission. The River Dragons were able to respond and take some of that energy out. And maybe for the third game in the row, we'll see some good energy coming from the Seawolves when they come out of intermission because that's where they have found success. And they take it to the River Dragons. We're coming up here on the midway point for this period as the Zamboni, the Twisted T Zamboni is circling the ice. We're going to send it back once again to hear from some of our partners on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, 
and uh, electronic security protection such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we want to just keep you connected. Hey, what's going on Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any, anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back. So come out and see them. Thanks, guys. Back here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum, the fans are doing the YMCA as your Mississippi Seawolves lead the Columbus River Dragons three to two after two complete periods. Now, when we are looking at what happened during the, during the second period, from up here in the press box, it seems like the attack was on, and it was apparently. In the second period, there were 12 shots on goal by the Columbus River Dragons, but in the goal tonight was Wyrick back for a second night in a row was only able to keep keep him out of the net except for the one time at the beginning of the period. And your Seawolves were only able to get eight shots on goal as they spent most of the most of the period, it seemed like in their defensive zone. Now the penalty situation in the second period, only one of your Seawolves ended up in the penalty box. That was Russell who was there for two minutes on a minor holding. And the, and the Seawolves were able to kill that penalty to keep that kill, penalty, that kill percentage up high. And there was not a single infraction by that were, that was caught by the officials, by the Columbus River Dragons, as they were able to avoid the box. All right, we're coming up on about five minutes left to go in this intermission as we're going to turn it back once again for some of our partners here at the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. Hey, what's going on Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back, so come out and see them. Thanks, guys.
we have built great relationships with not only the players, the staff, and everything that to do with the team. We've also built great relationships with other sponsors. Um, one of the things we incorporated this year and we plan to keep moving forward with is a discount to other sponsors. And some other sponsors have now jumped on board and are offering discounts to us and other sponsors as well. So it's just building another community of networking for business networking. And uh, I believe it's helping uh, grow small businesses here on the Gulf Coast. Two minutes left here in your second intermission. After two complete, the Mississippi Sea Wolves three, the Columbus River Dragons two. Right now, three is just under the goals for average for your Sea Wolves. And we hope that they are going to extend that average this evening as the Columbus River Dragons are taken back to the ice. The last intermission, the Sea Wolves. Stayed in the tunnel and waited till the last minute. They don't. They don't need to warm up too much. I think Coach Skinner has them ready to go as we're headed towards this final period of play. The Sea Wolves are hoping to get sneak out a win this evening, and I don't think there's going to be much sneaking to it as they have come out, and worked hard in their zone, playing decent defense. And now, once again, they're struggling against the Columbus River Dragons defense. The three goals are on the board, and they have been frantic at times, but they've been able to exploit the opportunities they have been given. And that's what the Seawolves are going to need to be, is opportunistic here in this final period. And they can't sit on their laurels and hope that they can ride out the next 20 minutes because any indication of that last half of the second period, the River Dragons were very, very aggressive in trying to, trying to stay in the Seawolves' defensive area and stay on the attack. Lyric is back in the net for your Seawolves. This evening, he's had quite a number of saves. Is he stretching to get him ready? And the fans here in the Coast Coliseum have been happy to see him back. And that's a, this evening, he's had 21 saves in the first two periods. And let's see if the defense can keep some of the pressure off of him as we're headed to the puck drop here at center ice. Looks like Barr was going to be there to take it. Kuznetsov out on the ice. Russell is as well. Lambert out here for the defense. As we're getting ready for the puck drop for the third period of play as your Seawolves have a 3-2 to two lead over the River Dragons. Ellens with the puck, tries to control it, but now here comes the River Dragons into the zone. Russell swings it around. Now on the attack, here comes Barr. Drops it to the far side of the ice, off over the door of Kuznetsov. It tries to get it towards the net, but we end up with a flying biscuit. 
Both teams are going to take this opportunity for a line change. This faceoff is going to be to Joseph's left on this glove side. Long headed to the dot. Columbus is able to control the puck. Oh, able to take take the puck off the wall, and the shot is stopped by Wyrick. Hunter there with the attempt. He was all alone, and Wyrick with the great save as they're at the 1920 mark. Here at the scoreboard on the Coast Coliseum. Face off here coming to Wyrick stick side. I'm expecting the River Dragons to be furious to keep the puck here in the zone. Sends it around. The official gets in the way. Off the skate. Coming here to the near side boards. Not able to clear it out. That was Nielsen here. Stoya. Now Bond carrying the puck around behind the net. As it appears, the attack is on. Bond sends it to the near side where Nielsen tries to get it back to the middle of the Bond. Not able to find the back of the net. Joseph was able to keep him out. And it's going to be an Omnitech icing call. Here are 18.47 left on the clock in the Coliseum. Bond on the dot for the faceoff. We can keep it here in the zone. Long with the puck on the far side net. Now behind the net. And he fires it in at the center line. Barr keeps it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not Barr. That's Aslan. Sends it around on the boards. Not Didn't have the opportunity to get it to Nielsen as he crossed, crossed in front of the net. Out there, shot by Anderson. And that, that puck is going to go out of play here as we're nearing the 18-minute mark. Both teams are going to take the opportunity again to change lines. After the puck is dropped. Columbus, oh, looked like a little extra pulling down by the stick there on Anderson. The official didn't see it. Now tied up on the boards. Out to the blue line. Martinock sends it in. They're not able to get it yet. And now here comes Columbus. Stoya able to get the puck. Back to, the, back to the neutral zone. And the shot is going to be stopped by Joseph. Another opportunity for a shot on goal for your Seawolves. Looks like the officials are going to encourage some timeouts here over on the bench without sending anybody to the box. Seventeen and a half left on the clock here in the Coliseum. On the boards in the zone, Barr trying to find an open man. Sent in by Russell. Barr is there, but the stop is made by Joseph. Seawolves be a very aggressive in their offensive zone. And that is exactly what they need to do. They can't sit down and try to keep control of the puck here at center ice with only a one goal lead. Russell sends it back in around the boards. 
Now back out to the near side. Into the neutral zone. Russell sends it to the far side. Now back here. Mark. Now. Oh. Columbus is able to get the puck, but Barr back in there. Pass just to have a reach of Helen. Hiding behind the net. Kuznetsov on the boards over there. And now Columbus tries to organize the attack. And the pass is covered up by Russell. Ah, Kuznetsov is not able to get there, but he's going to dump it in the zone as the Seawolves are going to have to tag out. Columbus. up for the attack. Finds a man at the center line. Hunter trying to pierce the defense, not able to do so. Gets it across to the center, dumps it into McDonald. The save is made by Wyrick and the puck is cleared out by your Seawolves. Back to the center ice. Right there behind the net, Joseph barely able to get back in time. Nilsson keeps it inside the zone. And that center attempt is going to be stopped by Columbus. And now McDonald with the shot from the top of the circle on the block by Wyrick. Here comes Nilsson again. And it's going to be an opportunity for a change for your Seawolves. As they're headed to the 15-minute mark. With Puck sitting there all alone. Martinock gets control of it. Here come the Seawolves. Portillo with the shot wide to the left. Now here comes Columbus. And that's where Columbus gets, gets the Seawolves off of the shot. They're able to turn around real quick. Get it back in their offensive zone. And now the Seawolves set up, try to organize the attack as we're under 15 minutes left in this contest. Columbus controls the puck. Sends it to the near side. Doe trying to find some space. Blocked up on the net, on the boards by Russell. And they're able to keep it in the zone. The puck was just trickling towards the slot. Alone in the slot was Doe. And he's able to get it on the rebound. And that's going to bring us to our first media timeout here in our third period of play. Your Mississippi Seawolves three, the Columbus River Dragons two. Hey, what's going on Mississippi Seawolves fans? It's number 23, Jackson Bond. I'm here with number 10, Philip Wong, and number 17, Kyle Russell. And we're here today at Gulf Coast Golf Carts in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, it's just off of exit 50. Come on out. They have new and used golf carts. They do services and repairs for any golf cart brand, so you can bring your own if you need any, anything fixed up. They're the people for you. Best prices on the coast, that's a guarantee. So come and see our friends. We appreciate all their support. We want to support them back. So come out and see them. Thanks, guys. Back here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Puck drop coming in the third period. The Mississippi Seawolves lead 3-2 to two over the Columbus River Dragons. Kuznetsov tries to find a man open in the zone. 
Weirich sends it around to the near side. Ryan's an open man, but he's not able to control the puck. Ella there on the defense. Centers the bump, centers the puck. Nobody there. Kuznetskov. And it's his own pass just out of reach. Now Helen with the puck. And the official steps in the way to separate the separate the scrum. Looks like we're not going to get that Gulf Coast wrestling fight here as we're at 13 and a half minutes left. This is the chippiness that kind of keeps the River Dragons off their game. That aggressiveness has helped the Sea Wolves this evening. You know, here in this three game series, the first series, the first game in the series, the River Dragons cleaned up seven to two after they dropped four goals early on the Sea Wolves. But that was right after a lot of lineup and additions. And then last night, it was a 3-1 game. Well, it was only 3-1 because of that empty net goal as the game closed down. And now your Seawolves are here with a 3-2 lead in the third period. Now coming here to the near side. Columbus with control of the puck. Sends it to the far side, trying to find somebody to center it. Not able to get the shot off Nielsen there to get in his way. And now we have, we have a River Dragon headed to the penalty box. It looks like we're going to get a chance for a Gulf Coast Firestone power play. And um, the clock says 13-11 here in the Coliseum. Long on the dot for the Seawolves. Columbus is able to maintain control and it squeaks out of, of the zone. Long trying to Really aggressive play here from the River Dragons in the shorthanded situation. The Seawolves trying to get out of their own, trying to get out of their defensive zone. Stoya now with the puck, sends it across the middle. Nobody's there to redirect it. Just out of the reach of the stick. Now back to the center. And Columbus clears the puck out. Weirich gets the puck, sends it to the near side board. Minute 10 left here on the power play. Aslan goes around the net. Here come the Seawolves on the attack. Quick little line change for the defenders. Columbus is able to clear the puck. And the refs pull on the Stevie Wonder over here. The camera was off, but Bond was getting the business after the puck cleared. Under 12 minutes left to go, coming up on 30 seconds left on this power play. And the one-timer from Bond wide to the right. Another shot wide to the right again. Seawolves trying to keep it here in the zone. They send it back on the boards. Columbus clears it out. Jameoff. Comes and now 15 seconds left in the power play. Seawolves being aggressive, looking for this man here in space in the slot. Not able to find it. That was Nielsen. Three seconds left on the power play. Notice here this evening as the power play comes near a close. See Weirich head over to the bench to get an extra, have two extra men advantage on the offensive 
in the offensive zone. And now Jamail in the box for two minutes. And it's going to be an extra power play goal or power play opportunity on the Gulf Coast Firestone power play. 11 minutes left to go in the contest. Bar heads to the dot. For three seconds, Seawolves have a two-man advantage. Columbus, not even right there, the shot from Russell. It's going to be covered up, but they're still on a power play here for your Mississippi Seawolves. Both teams are going to take the opportunity for this line change. A fresh mid of 53 here on the power play. He's long and Bond out there. Bond headed to the dot. Can't get it back to one. Ansel not able to keep it in the zone. Drops it back. Now it. Now in the neutral zone, as the Seawolves get organized, Stoya back across, back across the ice. Stoya puts it into the zone, slashing across the middle was Bond. Almost got him there, Bond was almost able to redirect it into the net. Good opportunity there for the Seawolves. 10 and a half left on the clock here in the Coliseum. And let's see if the River Dragons are going to be aggressive on this short hand. He's, Wyrick is able to block that wrist shot. Now Stoya getting things organized. 50 seconds left on the power play. Goes to place a tuck, and the puck clears the zone. Looks like your Seawolves may get one more good opportunity. Trying to steal the puck right there. Here come the Seawolves. But that pressure is going to force them to try to regroup here. Under 30 seconds left on the power play. Under 10 minutes left on the clock here in the Coliseum. It's Netsov. Not able to find pay dirt. Nielsen on the boards. The, ball, the puck trickles across the slot. Now Russell with the puck, dumps it in. And the River Dragon is going to be able to get the penalty kill here as both teams are at full strength. Not able to control the puck on the far wall. It was almost disastrous for the Seawolves. As Columbus dumps it back into the zone. Wicklock finds a man at the bottom of the house. Puck was too far above the net. His net saw sends the puck into the zone. Barr is not able to get there. Columbus now coming across the blue line on the attack. Lost it. Now here comes Helen. Dumps it in the slot. Another good opportunity there for the Seawolves. Bond not able to put it on frame. Um, Russell in the high slot. Sends it over the net. Caroms off the glass. Under eight minutes on the clock here in the Coliseum. We'll get the clock synced up here at the next opportunity with the break in the action. Line change from Columbus. And able to rest control of the puck. Right there, puck stolen and center ice by Bond. Back into control of Sharp Columbus. Now to the middle of the ice, McDonald. Look at her teammate not able to get there in time. And progress is slowed up, trying to wrap around. Looking for McDonald in the slot, not there. 
slot shot from Sikarik. Not able to find its way home. And it's going to be an Omnitech icing call here at 7-10 on the clock in the Coliseum. And that's going to bring us to our next media timeout here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. go. Pinball Republic Seawolves down here. Woo! Having a blast. This is so intense. So much fun. So I can't wait to get back out there. Let's go. This is just kill. Final period of play. Mississippi Seawolves with a 3-2 lead over the Columbus River Dragons. Right now, both teams are at full strength. I expect a lot of aggressiveness. You know, even when the Seawolves were on the power play, Columbus was very aggressive. A lot of time during that last power play, the Seawolves were in their own defensive zone. Seven minutes left in this contest. The faceoff is going to be to Wyrick Stickside. Columbus still leads in the shots on goal category with 29 shots on goal. You see Wolves with 23, but three of those have found the back of the net. Tracking down the puck. Now under seven minutes left to go in this contest. Face off coming to the right side of Joseph. Trying to find Portillo right there in the slot. Not able to get it there. Columbus is off the skate. You're going to see Portillo here again. Dumps it in. Putting pressure on the defender. Deeks around. Martinock. Martinock trying to get that puck here on the boards here on the near side. Those past the goal line, back around the boards. Nelson. And the Wolves are going to take this opportunity for a line change. Vaughn dumps it down. Columbus gathering up. Go on the attack. And. Not able to clear it out of the zone. Whew. Alone in front of the crease right there was, was Columbus. Now here come the Seawolves, Bond on the far side. They're going to dump it in for a line change. Nelson harassing the defenders. Helen now on the ice for your Seawolves. Out of the neutral zone, shot blocked by Wyrick. We're nearing here the five minute mark. And they are aggression 
stays in place. And a delayed stop here, except signal coming from the official. We're gonna wait to see what that call is. The crowd is not happy. We are going to see Russell headed to the penalty box. So it's gonna be a power play opportunity, a Gulf Coast Firestone power play opportunity for the River Dragons, as we're under five minutes left to go. And that's what we'll come back to, a power play for the River Dragons after this break here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. Five minutes left to go in this contest. Sea Wolves over there talking to Skinner, trying to get his second win here at home in his debut here at the Mississippi Sea Wolves. The Sea Wolves are able to get the win and they're trying to pull the upset. Less than five minutes in this contest to upset the number one team in the division. Columbus comes in with only four losses on the year. Your Sea Wolves look to hand them their fifth. This, this third period, as well as the first and the second, the Sea Wolves have come out with a lot of energy. And you can see that energy transferring to the crowd here. Now it looks like we might have a problem with the glass, but Stoya comes down and fixes it. As the River Dragons are gonna be on the power play. Stoya pokes it around the net. River Dragons are able to control the puck. Now McDonald, the top of the zone. One timer from McDonald, not able to find pay dirt. Slap shot. Stop by Wyrick. As the Seawolves are able to clear it out Minute and a half left on this two minute power play. Columbus gets organized here on the attack. Far side of the ice. Crosses it to the near side. Right there in the slot. Not able to put it home. Offense is able to stay in the zone. And able to turn around, Wyrick with the stop. 3.58 on the clock. The last goal scored by the River Dragons is less than a minute into the second period. In his second game back, Wyrick has the Seawolves in a position for the upset. Long here at the circle on the faceoff. Columbus converges on the puck. They're able to keep it in the zone. Wide left. Now wrapping it around. Trying to find a man across the middle with the redirect and it turns into a flying biscuit. Georgia hand was coming through the slot. Tried to just poke it with his stick to redirect it. 3.40 on the clock here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Seawolves trying to get that power play kill. 43 seconds left on the power play. Now at the blue line. Looking for somebody to pass it to, slash it through the middle, and the one-timer. Joy Ann Wyrick is able to keep it from finding the net. 
And the puck exits the zone. The offense is going to have to tag out. The Seawolves get a line change. Now McDonald is single for being all sides. Trying to get that power play goal. Only 14 seconds left on the power play for the River Dragons. Three twelve on the clock here. The Mississippi Sea Wolves holding on to the three to two lead. Columbus on the attack. Going to try to split the defenders, and he does split the defenders, and it's over the shoulder of Lyric into the four hole with three minutes on the clock. The equalizer for the River Dragons. The defenders didn't come to the puck and he was able to find that open shot and it squeaked over the shoulder of Wyrick. To the, to the center for the faceoff. And the River Dragons have a bit of urgency on. And what they're doing here, because it looks like Columbus does not want to go to extra time here this evening. Staying on the attack. Score three to three. Under three minutes left to go in the contest. Since that last power play opportunity for Columbus, you see Wolves haven't spent much time in their offensive zone. Columbus wraps it around the back of the net. Trying to get a shot up. Petronio does. Columbus is able to catch and control the carom. Two and a half left in regulation. And it's another flying biscuit here in the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Now comes the crunch time. We'll see how much gas is left in the tank of the Seawolves. 2.29 on the clock. Long at the faceoff, nobody, ah, Seawolves able to control the puck. Russell sends it back across the ice, dumps it down into the zone. Here near the boards, Columbus heads into the zone with the shot wide to the right. Mounts off the boards, trying to find a crosser. Not able to find him there. Under two minutes left. Russell with the board, push it into the board, and Wong dumps it into the neutral zone. And they weren't able to get back on side. It's going to be an offsides on Columbus. One forty-two left in this con regulation in this contest. It's a goal here in the waning minutes. Columbus was able to even it up. With Co, sends it to the boards, and again the Seawolves are not able to spend much time in their offensive zone. Aslan. The man goes past him, but not able to find anybody in the center. The one-time shot is wide to the right. And the puck comes down in the neutral zone. Now Lind is going to control the puck. As oh, 
They're able to sneak it away, trying to get a shot off. One minute left in regulation as the Seawolves are trying to clear the zone. The last seven minutes here have not had much offensive production from the Seawolves. Let's see if we can get a last push here in the last 40 seconds with the line change here. Finds Barr in. He centers it, not able to connect on that center pass. Hit slot, had a man there. 130 seconds left in the con regulation in this contest. Base off is going to come place on the dot on the far side of the ice. Barr skates in. The puck squeaks out here to the near side boards. And it slips past Lambert. Oh, man, right there in the crease trying to screen Wyrick. And it's unsuccessful. Seawolves clear the zone. Kuznetsov gets it to the middle. Chuck blocked by Joseph. 3.8 seconds on the clock here in the Coliseum. That was one of those opportunities the Scrappy Seawolves were looking for. Almost able to get it in there. We're going to have three seconds to try to avoid extra time here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Seawolves all knotted up. The River Dragons long in there. Bowled over on the faceoff. Get one wrister off and Joseph blocks it. And that brings us to the end of regulation. Columbus River Dragons three and your Seawolves three. As we're going to be heading to overtime. And then take this opportunity to send it to our partners here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network here from the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. Don't put those kids to bed yet. We're here for some extra time and the Mississippi Coast Coliseum and federal hockey rules. It is three on three, sudden death, golden goal. Long at center ice. River Dragons try to get their attack under control. McDonald here at the center line. Stoya out matching McDonald. Wong pushes McDonald into the wall. Stoya dumps it in to Bond. Bond one on one finds. Oh, holy cow, found Wong. And a great save by Joseph.
Both teams are going to take this opportunity for a line change. The face-off will take place over here to Joseph's right. Here on the ice for your Seawolves. See Russell Nielsen. And it looks like Lambert there on the, on the dot. No, that's not Lambert. That is Anderson wearing the 2-5 sweater. Now here comes Pedro Antonio. One on one, finds, finds him in the slot, able to be covered up by Wyrick. Save. That was a dangerous situation there. As they're trying to get the net back on the pipes. Four fifteen on the clock. Here in the Coliseum. Face off is going to be to Wyrick's right. Anderson still there on the dot. Columbus controls the puck, top of the blue line. Almost found his way home, looking to wrap around Columbus, trying to get it to the high slot. Not able to get it there. Now a lot of pressure in the zone. Now here comes Nielsen. Dumps it in to get a line change. Now on the ice. See Lynn and Wong. Trying to get past Wong. Sends it behind the net. Now back in the neutral zone. Trying to get a fresh man on the ice is Columbus. Now here comes Jamayoff on the far side. Runs into the official. Now here come your Seawolves. Slash into the zone. And that shot is going to be blocked by Joseph. On the clock here in the Coliseum, 3.08. A lot of action here in this three-on-three -three overtime situation. All the Seawolves fans are here. Nobody left early to beat the traffic. We're glad you guys are sticking with us here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. Bar at the dot, Helen. Here on the near side of the circle, near the slot. Dumps it back, and the wrister is not able to do it. And we have a breakaway. Gillen gets there. You know, I was talking about the speed of Columbus. Lynn shows some speed there. Two on one. Shut up, score, Seawolf. With 2.49 left, the Seawolves are able to put it in the back of the net for the overtime win over the division leading Columbus River Dragons. A great end to the series, full energy, the crowd's on their feet, and we look forward to this energy coming tomorrow night for the St. Patrick's game. River Dragons take their fifth loss of the year as the Seawolves walk out of here with a 4-3 to three overtime win. Second win for for Coach Skinner, second win here at home. And we look forward to getting the 
third win for Skinner here at home. So you stick around, wait to see who the stars of the contest are. What a great finish to a hard fought game by the Seawolves. They came out in the first period and never relented. They were scrappy and able to take advantage of the opportunities they had. And there at the end of overtime on a two for one, they were able to put it home. Let's take a moment to hear from our partners here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network. Omnitech is a, an American-based MSP. We're a multiple service provider. We provide IT support, telephone systems, especially specializing in VoIP, voice over IP services, and uh, electronic security protection, such as uh, alarm systems, uh, surveillance systems, and access control systems. Basically, we try to be your one-stop shop for all your technical needs, and we wanna just keep you connected. They just announced the stars of the game for your Mississippi Seawolves. The second star of the game was Philip Wong. He's able to put one in the back of the net. And your first star of the game was Lucas Heller. And once again, we want to end the evening by saying happy birthday to Kyle Lambert. And what a great way to celebrate your birthday. 4-3 victory for the Mississippi Seawolves here on the Mississippi Seawolves Broadcasting Network.